As long as you never quit, it's never over. I'm back here. John Bones John Bones Jones is one of the most exciting fighters in UFC history. A rare talent gifted with size, speed, and supernatural reach that made winning almost too easy for him. A legend among champions, Jones became the youngest ever UFC champion in history at 23. Since then, there hasn't been one single fighter younger than 23 that could even be considered a title challenger. Since becoming champion, he also set the record for longest win streak in the light heavyweight division and most title fight wins in UFC history. Love him or hate him, there's no denying that John Bones Jones is one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time. Who do you think is the greatest UFC fighter of all time? John Jones. So many world champions under my belt that I've defeated. No one is a real promising threat to John Jones. Which is part of the reason why he turned to drugs and alcohol. If anyone was going to beat the man known as Bones, it was going to be himself. I had this crazy thing that I would do um, where I would party one week before every fight. And I did it throughout my whole career. Eventually, his hard living ways caught up with him as he was involved in a hit and run accident that nearly sent him to jail. I hate you. I hate you. And forced the UFC to strip him of his light heavyweight crown. John Jones has done a lot of things to himself. He's saying, in one of his tweets, he was saying that I tarnished his. I tarnished you? You've done a very good job of tarnishing you. But let's start at the beginning. Jonathan Dwight Jones was born in Rochester, in the state of New York, on the 19th of July, 1987. His father was a pastor and wanted him to follow in his footsteps. But John had other ambitions. After getting into wrestling in high school, he became a state champion. Along with this, he also won the National Judo Championship while attending college. He knew that he was destined to become one of the greatest fighters of all time. And he was right. To push him even further down that path, as Jones would later tell it, when he found out that his girlfriend at the time was pregnant, he figured he could fight professionally to make some money. So instead of completing his university degree, he joined the Jackson Wink m and Academy and built up his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and striking to complement his wrestling. In 2008, Jones took the first steps on his journey to greatness by turning pro and competing in local promotions. He was just a 20-year-old kid with a dream, but his fighting IQ was off the charts. Jones with a suplex! In his professional debut at Untamed 20, he stunned the world with a series of powerful punches, earning a dominant TKO victory over the since-retired Brad Bernard. Just seven days later, he scored another knockout against Carlos Eduardo. And six days after that, he submitted Anthony Pino with a guillotine choke. I'll tell you what, John Jones my, is very, very, very impressive. Jones quickly became known for his incredible 84.5 inch reach and his ability to outstrike opponents with ease. And he's very, very talented, man. John Jones, a good up and comer, um, a guy that's, that's willing to fight. Just four months after his professional debut, the UFC reached out to Jones to sign him, thanks to his impressive undefeated record of six wins at such a young age. And thus, a legend was born. This fight is three rounds in the UFC. For his UFC debut, he accepted a fight on a two weeks notice and went toe to toe with Andre Guzman. While he didn't quite get the finish, Jones did what he does best and put on a clinic before securing a unanimous decision victory. Any fighter knows just getting into the UFC is a major accomplishment, but to do it so triumphantly had to feel great for the young Jones. He showcased an unorthodox but effective striking attack that overwhelmed his opponent and displayed all the tools that eventually turned him into a champion. A trip. Oh! And a right hand. Jones's next challenges, Stefan Bonner and Jake O'Brien, were quickly dispatched as he added two more dominant victories to his record. The first of these two fights, in particular, is worth mentioning as it was a real step up in competition. Bonner was a finalist on the original Ultimate Fighter and had shared the cage with some of the best the sport had to offer. Many believed that Jones had too little experience to win this match. Instead, 
Bonner probably still has nightmares of that night. Bonner trying to drag Jones to the ground, but unsuccessful. Jones dominated the fight, showing off a variety of suplexes, kicks, and elbows that his opponent just had no answer for. Yeah, after I'd been fighting him that, that first round, sitting on my stool, I'm like, this guy is fucking good, man. He is, he's gifted. You know, and he was so hard to get close enough to to hit. So I'm like kind of falling in with my punches, then you'd end up in his clinch, and then you're toast. You know, you're getting taken down. In just a few short months, he had taken the USC by storm with his incredible size, speed, and reach. By early December 2009, the hype around Jones was so high that he was given a prominent spot on a cable TV UFC fight card, where the world would get a chance to see his incredible skills on full display against Matt Hanimal. And John Jones was absolutely dominant in the fight. And at one point, he was on top of Hamill and he was looking to finish the fight by delivering strikes. Matt Hamill's in deep, deep trouble. Jones continued punching, pausing occasionally to look up at the referee, who seemed to have no interest in stopping the fight, despite the overwhelming offense of Jones and the complete lack of response from Hamill. I would die before I tag. No, no, I would never tag. So Jones went looking for something new with which to end the fight. That's when he started using 12 to 6 elbows, a prohibited striking technique. 12 to 6 elbow is just like if you're looking at a clock, guys, and your fist points towards the 12, and you bring your elbow down towards the 6. So straight up and down elbow. This is what caused the referee to finally intervene and stop the fight. The referee for that match was Steve Mazzagatti. Steve Mazzagatti stepped in, broke the action, checked on Hamill, didn't think he could continue, can't continue because of illegal strike. Pretty obvious where this goes. You disqualify John Jones. Due to intentional elbows, there's been a disqualification of Johnny Bones Jones. Therefore, the winner is Matt Hamill. This put a blemish on his undefeated status. If there was an illegal strike and the referee called it illegal and decided the other athlete can't go on, there was only one remedy for that situation, which is a disqualification, which was called. It would be later discovered that earlier in the fight, Matt had also dislocated his shoulder, and many believe the referee should have stopped the match sooner. Others say that it should have been ruled as no contest, and some have through the years insisted that the decision should be overturned. Does anybody here disagree with me that Masagati is a fucking yeah. toolbox? Yeah. Ultimately, the referee took the brunt of the criticism. Hamill himself would later write on his personal website that he believed Jones did nothing wrong, and that he didn't consider himself to be the winner. Setting the controversy aside, the most important thing that we should take away from that fight is that nobody had ever dominated Matt like that before. And as of this video, this is still the only loss on Jones' record. Ultimately, however, it didn't turn out to be an overpowering blemish on his reputation, if only because Jones' life outside the cage has provided it with such stiff competition. But we'll talk more about his controversies in just a second. Before we do, please subscribe to the channel. I'm a huge MMA fanatic, and I make documentaries on the life and career of the most interesting fighters. Subscribing will help us stay in touch, so you won't miss any of my future videos. For John Jones to beat Brandon Vera would be huge for his career, and for Brandon Vera to push back John Jones and send him back down would be gigantic for him as well. In 2010, Jones silenced his doubters by delivering devastating defeats to Brandon Vera and Vladimir Matyshenko. Oh, oh man, the point of the elbow right in the eye socket. After their match, Vera was diagnosed with multiple fractures to the face, requiring him to stay away from the octagon for months. Johnny Bones Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Jones' rise to glory gained significant momentum in 2011, when he defeated Ryan Bader with a guillotine choke. You know, he's so well-rounded, too, for such a young guy who's only been competing and training for just a little over three years. I mean, it's really incredible. And immediately afterward, he was informed that, in just over a month, he would face Mauricio Rua for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship title. Uh, my heart is racing, but it's just, it's just, uh, it's God, man. God is just so good. I'm emotional, but um, it's just excitement and just me being so grateful and realizing uh, the power that God has. When he wants to do something great for you, he will. Congrats, another fine performance. Jones was still a 23-year-old kid, and less than three years removed from his pro debut, when he encountered the 29-year-old Rua. 
What about John Jones excites you? Yeah, actually, everything that uh, has been uh, has been said, uh, everything that people are saying, uh, you know, the whole hype, uh, it really serves as motivation. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed US By now. UFC fans were pretty accustomed to seeing Jones dominate light heavyweights. However, they were still curious to see how he would fare against the best fighter in the division. Has to look out for the elbows. There it is. Jones 12 and 1 in his MMA career. It only took a few minutes to get a definitive answer. He was great. Absolutely, unarguably great. Jones attacked from the outset with knees, kicks, and all forms of takedown attempts, and then battered Rua on the mat with elbows. Jones throwing that side kick to the thigh. Nice knee by Jones. He drew blood with additional elbows in the second round. Bro, he's so confident right now too, Mike. He's, he's really having his way with Shogun. And because of that, he's not getting tired. And wrapped things up in the third, pressing the young on old violence, until the champion eventually dropped to the mat and was humanely rescued by the referee. Rogan, to name just one, was so impressed that he declared Jones to be the greatest talent ever seen in the UFC. And the, st the skills. He's phenomenal. Incredible. The best ever. John Jones, the new UFC light heavyweight champion. And just like that, he became the youngest champion in UFC history. Um, John Jones got through a tough test tonight and passed with flying colors. The real challenge starts now. In addition to this octagon triumph, Jones had showcased his heroic side on the morning of the fight. While out for a run with his coaches in Patterson, New Jersey, he foiled a robbery by chasing down the suspect. This act of bravery further solidified his stellar reputation. Then I hear the story about how he runs out and, uh, you know, stops this guy uh, that, that, that just robbed these people, waits for the police to come. I'm like, man, that, 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 that's, a, that's a pretty big day for a guy. Then he comes in here and dominates Shogun. You know, the, the only thing left to do is to deliver a baby on the way home tonight. However, they say that a champion isn't truly a champion until he makes his first title defense. And so, in September 2011, Bones faced off against Quentin Rampage Jackson, who declared that he would knock Jones out and end his hype. I'm going to destroy John Jones. On the 24th. Instead, Jones dominated the fight and finished Jackson in the fourth round with a rear naked choke submission. What a spectacular, flawless performance. Oh, oh, it's 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 all in his first successful title defense, Jones defeated a rampage who was in the best condition, physically and mentally, that he had been in for a long time. Still, Rampage never even came close to landing a meaningful strike. I feel like Jones is a smart fighter, and it was really hard for me to hit him. He wouldn't, he wouldn't let me hit him. It should be noted that Rampage also complained about Jones being a dirty fighter. He's, he's like creative. the dirtiest fighter. He's the dirtiest he's fighter creative. too. He'll, he'll, he'll put his fingers in my eye. Still, this impressive victory solidified Jones' place as the best fighter in the division, and he would wrap up 2011 by defeating Lyoto Machida. Jones is one of the most dynamic fighters in the game continually evolving with time and altering his game to adapt to his opponent's styles. He's known for his diverse kicking arsenal which includes roundhouse kicks, front kicks to the head and body, and the deceivingly damaging oblique kick to the knee. He's a brilliant fighter from the clinch as well, and his spinning elbow often catches his opponents off guard. I go here. However, what truly sets him apart is his ground and pound technique. He knows how to land heavy blows with punches and elbow strikes, even from short distances from the top mount. This makes him one of the most dangerous fighters on the ground. In April 2012, Jones put on another dominant performance against a former UFC champion when he defeated Rashad Evans. Uh, it's a good time for me to submit my legacy, and it's a perfect opportunity and perfect chance for me to do that. Though Evans was the first man to go a full five rounds with Jones, he was simply outclassed by the champ. In short, Jones beat him in every aspect of the fight. Did a punch and again. Evans is an extraordinary quick, exceptionally strong, abnormally well-conditioned light heavyweight. He also had a psychological advantage over Jones that no other fighter could possibly have. He had been his training partner in the past. Regardless, he never had a chance. 
Jones used his trump card, his insane inch reach, to stay out of harm's way while figuring out novel methods of pulping his opponent's face, tossing his customary arsenal of leg kicks, and you get the picture. Jones was on top of the world. Fresh off his huge win against Evans, he became the first MMA fighter to be sponsored by Nike. But he got himself into a bit of trouble when he crashed his Bentley into a pole in Binghamton, New York, one early morning in May of 2012. He was arrested on the scene and was very fortunate that he did not get himself or anybody else seriously injured, but for the first time his public image took a hit. It was a shock to most people that he would put himself in this kind of position. Sadly, it turned out to be a sign of things to come. To further showcase how immature he really was, he then incurred the wrath of Dana White after refusing to fight at UFC 151. This is probably one of my all-time lows uh, as being president of the UFC over the last 11 years. For the first time in, uh, in 11 years, we're going to cancel an event. This was supposed to be a battle between Jones and Dan Henderson, but when Henderson pulled out of the fight due to an injury, Chael Sonnen was chosen to replace him. However, Jones refused to take the fight. As a result, UFC 151 became the first event canceled by the promotion. White crucified Jones in the media for not accepting the fight, and for the first time in Jones' life, he started to look cowardly and selfish, as fighters and fans alike gave him a ton of grief for not taking the fight. He would then be hastily scheduled for the UFC's next pay-per-view event, UFC 152 against Vitor Belfort in September 2012. Surprisingly, Belfort actually managed to put Jones in danger. For a good 15 seconds, we saw the champion lose his impenetrable aura of invincibility. He felt pain, he was human. At one point, it almost looked like his arm was about to snap off. But unlike most of us, who would have tapped within six seconds of Belfort's armbar, Jones didn't. He got out of that and went on to dominate the rest of the fight, eventually submitting his opponent in the fourth round. I honestly was waiting for it to break. I was not going to tap out. But man, I tell you what, that, I've never felt that before. I got a lot of rest in it to do. Now, uh, in the second... What makes it even more impressive is that later it was revealed that Belfort had elevated levels of testosterone on a pre-fight drug test, but apparently still not enough to defeat Bones. promote fights, I pick fights, I'm better than John Jones, I'm better than Sean Combs, I am even better than John Holmes. John Holmes is a dead junkie and Sean Combs is like a rapper, is that the other guy? Don't bring up old business, the course is current events, FX Ultimate Fighter just before Justified Tuesday night. Sonnen finally got his date in the cage with Jones in April 2013 and nearly ended up as champion, despite Jones dominating. While mauling Sonnen in the bout, Jones dislocated his big toe. Nonetheless, he got the TKO finish with 27 seconds left in the first round. Had Sonnen survived to the horn, perhaps the doctor would not have allowed Jones to continue with the grotesque injury. Uh-oh, oh, he's got a broken foot. I, I, obviously, you're in some serious pain, man. I'd love to talk to you about this if you can, though. Can you talk? Yeah, yeah I'm all right, man. It wasn't necessarily a fight that we needed. But if anything else, it was a stark reminder that Jones is one of the toughest fighters the sport has ever seen. He needed only nine toes to finish his opponent. An epic war with Alexander Gustafson followed. Gustafson did not have the name recognition that any of Jones' previous opponents did, but on that night he looked to be the biggest threat of all. He bloodied and battered the champion and tested him in a way no one had ever seen before. Uh, it, it was tough, it was tough, but, but, but it, it was a good time for me. He caused a massive gash under Jones' eye and even became the first man to take him down. The fight was, was it's a highlight in my career for sure, in my life for sure. What a fight! Unbelievable! What a fight! A lot of people thought he deserved the win. Jones himself later admitted that he was so hurt at the end of the match 
that he couldn't even wipe his own butt, and one of his coaches had to do it for him. But to his credit, he pushed back against his opponent, winning the final two rounds and ultimately the fight with the unanimous decision. This would set a new record for most consecutive light heavyweight title defenses. In April 2014, it would be Glover Teixeira's turn to attempt the impossible. He's a great fighter, he's got all the tools, he's a great champion. I'm gonna take that belt away from him tomorrow. He may have stuffed a majority of Jones' takedown attempts, but he also managed to get hit more than twice as much as he hit Jones. Ultimately, it wasn't a good night to be standing across the cage from Bones, who left the octagon with yet another win. Shortly after, Jones would appear with Daniel Cormier at a Las Vegas news conference to announce their title fight for the following year, and the two would end up brawling on the hotel lobby floor. the Nevada State Athletic Commission unanimously voted to discipline both fighters. Jones received a $50,000 fine and 40 hours of community service. Cormier was hit with a $9,000 penalty and ordered to complete 20 hours of community service. As a result of all the negative publicity Jones was attracting, Nike would cancel their sponsorship. I'm not afraid of John Jones in any way, shape, or form, so he's not gonna come in there and try and bully me. That's not gonna happen. So, yeah, I pushed his ass, get out of my face. Around this time, Jones would also be accused of writing homophobic slurs to some fan on Instagram. He would justify himself by saying that his phone was stolen and his account hacked. However, his reputation was hurting, and the media kept painting him as a bad representation of the sport. When I come out with things, you know, people want to talk about it, and some, you know, half the audience are positive and half are negative. I'm just grateful to have 100% of the audience. Right, they're not indifferent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when they're indifferent, you know, they don't give a crap. Then, then it's they, a problem. Then it's a real problem, yeah. That's right. when your pay-per-view numbers are terrible and, and your, your t-shirts aren't selling and, and, you know, so. Jones and Cormier would finally fight in January 2015. So Jones never, he don't hit hard. He doesn't punch hard, but he kicks really hard. <laughs> so like, <laughs> he kicks like really, really hard. Yeah. A lot of people thought Cormier had it in him to dethrone the champion. Needless to say, they were wrong. Jones gave fans the dogfight they wanted to see. Look at this. Goes the oh. distance. Ultimately earning a unanimous decision. You know, I know I lost and um, John won. That's pretty much all it boils down to. It doesn't matter if it's closer or if it's, if it's, uh, if it's, if it's not, you know, he won the fight. However, just one day after being featured on Forbes magazine's 30 under 30 list of the brightest young stars in sports, Jones' public image took another hit when the Nevada State Athletic Commission revealed he had tested positive for cocaine prior to the Cormier fight. What was even more alarming was his stint in rehab afterwards. He stayed in the rehabilitation facility for just one day. Obviously, he did not care to get help. I believe Mr. Jones is currently the most gifted, wasted talent on the face of the earth. I hope you get yourself together and finish what you should be doing and becoming the best in the world. Stay out of trouble, keep it together, let's meet soon. Later that year, he would be involved in a hit and run accident in Albuquerque that injured a pregnant woman driving the other car. I really had no clue what I hit. I didn't know if it was a, a car or a truck. I didn't know if it was a man or a woman. I, I really, I just, like my, my vision was so like narrowed in and, and I, I, just, I just knew I needed to run as fast as possible. According to the Albuquerque Police Department, Jones crashed his SUV into another car and was accused of leaving the scene of the accident. Okay, so you had a green light? You, yeah, were you I at a dead stop from a red to a green or no, were you already? I was going. You were going, yeah. okay. So did he just turn and hit yeah. you? Okay. Um, Did you look at the other person in the other car? No, I had no clue that it was a woman. I had no clue that it was a pregnant woman. How um, much time were we talking about? Like from the time? Literally, was the, the, from the time that I hit, I had, I had, I had, I was over a fence, probably 
eight seconds later. It was it was literally a super reactionary like just. Jones turned himself into the police 24 hours later. Ultimately, he didn't serve any jail time, but was sentenced to 18 months probation. As a result, the UFC would strip off his championship title, remove him from the rankings, and suspend him. In March 2016, while Jones was still on probation, he got pulled over by a cop one night in Albuquerque. Okay, any reason, sir? Any reason for what? For the way you're driving. The footage of the encounter showed that this police officer was definitely not a fan. Don't tell me what I know. You're going to testify to what I know? Yeah, fuck yeah, I'm going to testify to what According to the officer, Jones' car had an illegible license plate. He was unable to maintain a traffic lane and was showing exhibition driving. Okay. All right, absolutely. Liar. Well, we can talk about it in court. I need you to sign inside this box. Once again, you're not admitting guilt. You're letting me know you're aware of the court date. Ultimately, Jones was ordered to take anger management and driver improvement classes and would finally return to the Octagon in April of that same year against Ovin St. Pru. Man, it feels so great to be back. I miss this game so much. Um, just feel alive, man. I feel like, you know, my life's getting back in order and, and uh, and I'm just extremely grateful to be back here on this platform. So the elbows from this position of Jones. Yep, right. Nice right up elbow. Despite the time away from the octagon, Jones would win every single round to win the interim light heavyweight championship. Jones! I need to kill this Debbie Downer attitude. I just won a fight in the UFC. I, uh, yeah, I got a lot to be grateful for. Jones would then be scheduled for a rematch with Cormier at UFC 200. You know, I've got a beautiful life, beautiful family, and uh, opportunities come, opportunities go, but they always represent themselves to people who do the right thing. In July, however, Jones tested positive for two banned illegal substances and was pulled from the event. Jones said that he was innocent and that the result were wrong due to him having used a sex enhancement pill. And I've taken sex pills several times throughout my adult life. Um, highly recommend it, guys. Fucking great. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Still, he was suspended for one year and stripped of his interim title, making him the first champ to be stripped twice. Around then, interviewed by ESPN, White would call Jones the biggest screw-up ever. It just sucks that he's had so many controversies in his life, but I'm hoping he puts all that shit behind him. After a 15-month absence from the cage, Jones would get another shot at the title. At UFC 214 in July 2017 against Daniel Cormier. Hey guys, I made it to the event. I'm gonna kick his ass this time. Good luck to you, sir. The champion, ladies and gentlemen. In a superb match, both fighters had their moments. The first two rounds were close, but about halfway through the third round, Jones landed a kick to the head, followed by relentless punches that knocked Cormier unconscious to regain the light heavyweight championship. Yeah, that's, that's just insane. So. It is just insane, right. yeah. And he finished him with a kick that DC said he's never going to hit him with. Yeah, That's what was know. crazy. <laughs> that's, that's insane, yeah. He's like, you never going to hit me with that left eye no. kick? Oh, oh wow. Bam. Yeah. What John Jones accomplished tonight is, is incredible, you know. Sadly, that highlight reel finish was officially wiped from the record books when Jones later tested positive for steroids. Because John Jones uh, tested positive for Tarinabol from a sample the day before your guys' fight, of course, at UFC 214 in July. This is a death sentence. Jones would be suspended for an additional 15 months. The win would be overturned to a no contest, and the title change officially erased. I feel like I have taken losses throughout my whole uh, adult life publicly. You don't ever, you've it never looked like you. a guy who was on steroids. To be accused of steroids, um, people, you go from hero to zero immediately in some people's eyes. Finally, at the end of 2018, Jones would be allowed back into the octagon for a rematch against Alexander Gustafsson. Silencing his haters, he didn't miss a beat. 
outstriking his opponent before forcing a ground and pound TKO in the third round. In early 2019, Jones would also earn a unanimous decision against Anthony Smith, followed by a split decision against Thiago Santos. However, it's been a while since we all last saw him put on a dominant showing inside the octagon, save for his 2018 TKO win over Gustafsson to reclaim the belt. Bones' succeeding performances were satisfactory at best. Even his most recent fight at UFC 247 against Dominic Reyes was highly disputed. Although he got the win, a good amount of fans and pundits believe the challenger should have gotten a nod on the scorecards instead. Dominic Reyes. Dominic Reyes thought he won the fight. Right. You know, real I did close. Too. Real close fight. I, I feel unsatisfied. You know, like uh, I feel like I've I've accomplished so much in the sport, um, but I feel like some of my troubles have made me just unsatisfied. Right. Um, you know, I've I've had an extraordinary extraordinarily beautiful career inside of the octagon outside of the octagon it's been very rocky as of late and uh because of the as of late part i feel like i have more to prove all things considered despite the challenges and controversies that have marked his career john bones jones has proven time and time again that he is a fighter of unmatched skill and determination with his incredible talent and unbreakable spirit he has overcome adversity both in and outside of the octagon to become a champion in the ufc and perhaps even an inspiration to many. From his relentless determination to his dominant reign as champion, he has made his mark on the sport and will always be remembered as a true legend of mixed martial arts. And now I'm trying to focus on who am I as a person outside yeah. of that. In a bid to bring some goodness back into the world, Jones founded a charity known as The Care Project, a platform for nonprofits and like-minded organizations to work on improving the quality of life of New Mexicans. See, this care project is is so so big for me. It's it's like being an athlete don't mean shit if you're not doing something with it. If you're not impact, impacting somebody else in some type of positive way or friends, family, and and what really matters. This is the story of John Jones, a man who has shown us that even champions bleed, both inside and outside the cage.